Hello and welcome back to Brawler Bios. I'm your host, Malorian, also known as Brian, and this is the podcast that's all about War Machine, but more specifically, Brawl Machine. That is the 25-point version made by the great people there of Line of Sight, and we're going to be talking about casters, grading them, making lists for them, all that great stuff, but just thinking about Brawl Machine in that 25-point size. So what we're going to be talking about today is is actually jumping back over to Circle. We've now gone through all the different factions, covered all their starting casters, and now we get to talk about, well, whoever we want. And I had a request to talk about Balder, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be talking about Balder the Stone Cleaver. Uh, it is a Circle Black-clad Warlock. It is Fury 6, Speed 5, Strength 7, Mat 7, so that's nice. Rat 4, doesn't matter, doesn't have a gun. Defense 14, Armor 16, uh, Command 8, now that that really matters. And then has 17 hitboxes and a real healthy 31 War Beast points. Now, the special role that you can see here at the top of the card is going to be having Pathfinder. So, okay, that's nice going through this stuff. Plus, we're going to be seeing here that Balder likes the trees. And then as well, it has its one weapon, which is Tritus, which is a range to P plus S14 magical weapons. And that it also has weight of stone. So... When a model is damaged by this weapon, it suffers minus three speed and death for one round. So that speed part typically doesn't really come up because if you can hit something with this big old sword, um, if it survived, it's probably hitting your caster back. So that's not usually the part that matters. However, that defense certainly can. I mean, we talked about how Mat 7 is a pretty nice stat to have, but if you hit them just that very first time and bring them down, well, you're effectively Mat 10 at that point, and that's pretty fantastic. There's also some other rules here at the back of the card. First one here being Elemental Mastery. And what it says is that Construct War Beast in this model's bag group, beginning their activations in this model's control range, can charge and make power attacks without being forced. This model can heal friendly Construct War Beasts in its battle group. So that's a really nice thing to have. I mean, not only are your Constructs then going to be getting that free charge, the power attack, sure, that can happen sometimes too but charges happen all the time and if you're not paying for a charge well that's just one more focus you can be using to be buying attack boosting something it just really makes them very efficient Plus, normally you can't heal constructs like you'd heal a regular beast, right? Spend one fury, heal them up, but Balder can. This is something he's able to do, so that's fantastic. Now, the other rule that's on here is a little bit more situational, but it is Forest Walk. So while completely within a forest, this model can forfeit its normal movement to use Forest Walk. If it does... Choose a location completely within this model's control range that is completely within a forest and then remove this model from the forest and place it in the chosen location. This model cannot use forest walk while knocked down. Now, this rule can use, be used in like two different ways. There's defensively, so maybe you're just in a real bunch of trouble. You need to get out of dodge, so you are in a forest and boop, you go over to another forest. Off you go. Hopefully now you're safe. This can also be used offensively, though, because if you see that uh, the target you're going after is by a forest, you can forest walk over to it and then like, boop, I can now be making attacks against you when you thought you were safe. Maybe now I'm behind you. Whatever it is, you should always be keeping this in mind for its offensive potential as well as what its defensive potential was as well. All right. Going over to what spells are on the card, the very first one here is going to be Earth Spikes. And this will be important for another reason, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, Earth Spikes is a cost 3, range 10, AoE 3, POW 13 offensive spell. And it says, when making this attack, ignore cover and concealment. And on a critical hit, models become knocked down. Now, this spell is important because okay it's kind of like your uh, offensive spell that you can shoot all the other things on here are going to be upkeeps and it's also a way that you can be knocking something down so that's pretty nice the other reason why this is important is because it is the only 
offensive spell on the card. And given that this is a caster, a warlock, that wants to be having a bunch of constructs, well, geomancy is a thing, and if they're going to be casting your offensive spells, well, this is going to be the only one available here. So we have to keep this in mind that as we're going to be building the list later, this is going to be the only spell they're going to be using, and it's not a bad one, right? The cost doesn't matter. They're doing it for free. A PAL-13 AoE spell has a chance to knock down. Hey, that has some utility to it. You know, it's a strong enough spell to be worth doing offensively. It has an AoE if you can catch some other, you know, infantry in the way. And hey, if you can knock something down too, why not? And also remember too that AoE is that it's models hit, not directly hit. So it's not like the one that you targeted. You can target one thing that's easy to hit, give yourself a better chance to hit that crit. And then if you do get it, everything underneath that AoE is knocked down. So sometimes a very situational spell, but something to keep in your mind how it works. All right, this next one here is an interesting one. It is Rapid Growth. It is a cost two range control AoE four upkeep spell. And what it says is place an AoE, the, the AoE four, completely within the spellcaster's control range. The AoE is a forest and remains in play as long as the upkeep is paid. Now, this can be used for a couple of things. Uh, one, you could be using this defensively, kind of like with uh, the casters that make clouds. You can be putting out this there and being like, all right, you can't see me because there's a forest in your way. And the nice thing here too for that defensive potential is that there's a lot of things that can uh, ignore clouds. There's very few things that ignore uh, forests for line of sight. And even if something where like, okay, I can put a cloud in your way, but you can't see me, but I guess you could just walk to me. Well, now this is also a forest, so if they're wanting to go through it, that's going to be the difficult rough terrain, and they're going to be slower while doing that. Here's the other thing. Remember that rule we had on the other side of the card saying forest walk? Well, you don't always have control of the terrain that's on the table. However, this is the one ex exception here, right? You will always be able to put down this one rapid growth. And so you can be putting this on yourself to be saying, okay, I'm going to set myself up so I can be putting this little forest here now. And then on my next turn, I can be jumping to that forest over there. Or if you're playing on a table that has a forest, you can run over to it and then be using this offensively, being like, all right, wherever you go, I can kind of cast this forest and then use my forest walk to jump over to it. So, you know, sometimes you're a sad balder where you're playing on a table that has no forest whatsoever, and this will all be very limited. But even if you can't really utilize that forest walk potential, there's still going to be just that fact that, hey, you thought that your one jack's going to be charging me? No, there's a forest in front of it, and it's going to be having a hard time. Maybe you can just put the forest right on their model and now like, hey, you can see me because you're in the forest, but you're going to be losing X inches as you're having to fight your way outside of the forest. So a very interesting spell to have. And I believe right now it's the only model that even has it. All right. The next spell on the card is going to be solid ground. It is a cost to rain self uh, AOE control. So, you know, affects everything within 12 inches upkeep. And while in the spellcaster's control range, friendly faction models cannot become knocked down and do not suffer blast damage. So this is kind of a weird spell to have on this card. Uh, again, normally you're running this with a bunch of constructs uh, and you don't really have a ton of things in there that do have tough, but I mean, you could be running this in a different way where you do have tough models and then great, if they ever get knocked down, they're, they're alive, right? They, they've passed your tough, you get your one box back, but you're not knocked down because you have solid ground up. It can also be a nice defensive thing if you know you're up against a Krios or something else like that that's going to be trying to knock you down okay this is something you can be using defensively as well uh maybe again you're running a list that has a bunch of small infantry and you're worried about blast damage okay you can be doing this too but i kind of find that this rule this spell is a real workaround if you want this to be doing a lot of work on the card your list specifically has to have this built in you know it's not like rapid growth where it really goes with what your caster is going to be doing anyway this one's really going to depend on whether your list has the elements in it and you're facing the things that might be making this situational as well for it to actually come up. So 
Yeah, it's a good spell to have, but not always critical. All right, so the last one here is going to be Stone Skin. It is a cost two, rain six, upkeep spell, and it says target friendly faction model slash unit gets plus two strength and armor, but also suffers minus one speed and defense. So this is a, an interesting buff that you can be putting on to either himself or onto your, somebody in your battle group or a unit, giving it that plus one strength and armor, so skewing your damage output and your, your armor ability. Uh, however, you are also going to be that minus one speed speed and death. Now the death normally doesn't matter as much. Uh, again, Baldur is normally in an army of constructs, which classically do not have high defense. So, you know, if your defense nine or 10, who cares? You're probably getting hit. That speed though can be a very big factor. So do remember that it always sucks when you measure something and be like, okay, am I in range? Okay, I am. Let's throw in the stone skin. Oh no, now I'm minus one speed and I can't get there. Or maybe, you know, usually the first turn, what you're doing is going and casting your upkeeps and getting out there. Well, if you're minus one speed, yeah, you're now going two less inches than you thought when you're going to be running up. So you probably want to do a thing where you run up first and then cast this on them it's something you really have to be keeping in mind with that speed now of course uh if we're talking about circle here so if you have shifting stones it doesn't matter you're just gonna be teleporting that model anyway but again it's definitely a drawback that you do really have to keep in mind because it can it can really hose you if you forget it all right, getting to the feet of the caster now, it is Broken Earth, and what it says is while in Baldur's control range, friendly faction models gain cover, so okay, that can be pretty nice if you're being shot at or whatever, and while in Baldur's control range, enemy models never have Pathfinder and treat open terrain as rough terrain. Broken Earth lasts for one round. Now, that first part of the feat, again, situational. You're usually low defense anyway. So adding four to it, nice, but not really the biggest deal. You know, obviously someone like Boulder, Boulder will enjoy this because starting at defense 14, you're going up to 18. So Boulder himself can be popping this and be feeling fairly safe that you're not going to be uh, hit by anything else. Again, remember that this is straight up cover. So if you are in a trench and pop your feet, it's not like double dipping. It's not like the feet said plus four and then the cover gives you plus four. You're just getting one or the other. That other part though, that can be huge. You know, if you remember when I was talking about the whole idea of using that rapid growth to put the forest out there to slow them down, that is exactly what this is doing. It's really making it so that everything within the, the 12 inches around Baldur, that's just going to be slowing your opponent down. And even if they have something that grants them Pathfinder after, it doesn't matter. You, just, you can't have Pathfinder. You're going to be slow. And so what this really does is allows you to really get those alphas where you need it, right? If your opponent is paying two inches for every one inch they move because everything is at rough terrain, that is amazing. And that's exactly what you need to ensure that you're typically slower constructs can actually be the ones getting the alpha. So that's usually the biggest part of that feat. So, okay, that's everything that's on the rules. Let's now go in and actually talk about a list. Now, there are lots of different ways you could be doing this. When I talked to one of our local circle players, they actually suggested that I should go a different way, uh, maybe go with devourers type thing as a theme. Uh, but to me, I really want to be sticking with these constructs. You know, to me, that's what Baldur's all about. So I want to lean into that. So that's why I went to Bones of Oberos. It's really then going to be leading me down this, this path here. You know, all the different special rules here where you can, you know, leech and remove one damage from from your your war beast okay that can be something that's all right uh you can also have your friendly models already being affected by your upkeeps again be careful with that because there's that one where oh i can be putting putting out the uh stone skin right away but it'll be slowing them down you gotta look out for that but hey you could be putting out that solid ground right away so that's the one that you can be doing whereas the stone skin you might not want to be starting out there uh, for the battle group, I have it there being pretty hefty. I mean, you can already be pretty hefty in that battle group because you have the 31 war beast points. 
but I'm putting in there a walled guardian. This is a nice high armor model that really wants to be having that spell on it. So it's going up to 22 armor, which is pretty decent. Also hitting very hard as well and was already very slow. Probably already the thing you're going to be teleporting in there. So it's okay having that minus speed. Um, I'm also going with good old Megalith. That is Boulder's bonded war beast so definitely wants to be together and also really plays with that whole idea where it has the animus where you can be saying everything within five inches of this is now being counted as rough terrain and also your opponents are minus two deaf so this really just kind of plays more into that kind of like boar control aspect maybe if you want to hold off the feet or you already popped the feet this is helping you control it even more and you know hits hard heals fast not too bad and i also put in a wold warden which will just be just another beater and another spot of geomancy so i talked about geomancy before so the world warden has geomancy uh, also your megalith is going to have geomancy so these are just two other spots where you could be doing those spells if you need it but just a nice hefty construct group it'll be looking great thematically and really synergizes with your caster as well now for my rec option i'm going to be taking kogan the exile just a fantastic model that can go in there uh smash things you know slam things around do be aware about how that's actually been changed with the latest errata uh, it is actually a tough model in this list so solid ground can be helping it if you have any extra focus and then past that i wanted to be taking the shifting stones like we talked about you know you are not the fastest type of army and especially if you're going to be having that stone strength onto the world guardian st speed three that's going to be a bit of a problem but if you have the shifting stones just to kind of teleport them in that's going to be a fantastic plus it's a unit so if you ever need that to score and then finally i had three points so i'm going to be putting in here a black black clad stone shaper and really the reason why i'm doing this is just a whole point where it can do that earth's power and be adding plus two strength to one of your war beasts because uh, as much as these big huge stone constructs look cool some of them are not the strongest right like the world warden only being p plus s16 can sometimes really hold you back and even though you have the stone strength that can usually be only going to one spot although you can swap it around if you need it's always gra great to have that extra hitting power where possible so that's how i built this list there is of course other ways you could be going about it uh different ways to be going with it but to me if you're going balder he He's all about the constructs i am going to be going and suggesting to go with the theme if nothing else so with that out of the way the next thing here is to do some grading this is the fun part where we're going to be looking at how they grade for their answers their questions their personal output how it is for being used for a new player and for an experienced player and maybe you agree with me maybe you don't that's what makes this all so fun so the first thing here the first thing we're going to be grading is what does it have for answers, right? If I'm up against an opponent that's skewing one way or the other, what does Boulder bring to the table that allows me to answer this? And there's a little bit there for sure. Uh, there are things like if you're going for high defense, I can be trying to hit you with White of Sloan and trying to bring that down. Not the best, but it's something there. I'd probably have another bigger one is, of course, that one spell, Stone Skin. So if you're going for high armor, I have my strength buff I can be putting out there and I suppose that if my opponent is really hoping that they get the alpha I have a really a lot of ways I can be shutting that down between my feet slowing them down and putting a, a forest in their way for line of sight type things these are ways where I can be really trying to uh, shut those things down but those are you know that's not usually the type of answer I'm kind of looking for so there are some things in there where I could hit harder lower defense that lower defense thing really being limited so as far as having answers there doesn't seem to be tons on the card here there's little bits there there's things you can be making some arguments but I think if anything this is just like average I'm going to be leaving this one down as a C the next one here is asking questions. Can you deal with this? And I think that's where there's probably a little bit more, probably a lot a bit more. I mean, again, we can be going to stone skin and saying, okay, I'm adding on some armor. 
Can you deal this? But the biggest part here that we're really saying is the board control, right? Between that feet and saying, hey, you know, can you deal with this? If you're planning to be going and trying to fight me, well, guess what? I am getting the alpha because I'm going to be slowing you down. Or, you know, just the fact that I'm be putting these forests in the way, right? Maybe I'm getting in there and I'm able to attack part of your army and then, oh, you have a heavy that's going to be countering me? No, now it's going to be behind a forest or in a forest and it's just going to be having a hell of a time. So Baldur's ability to be saying, okay, I'm going to have this feat in this forest that's really going to be controlling things around here really, really massive and something you can definitely be having a lot of troubles with. Now, that is just kind of one piece, so it's not like this jumps up into an A or anything else like that, but I would like to put this down at least as a B. I think maybe I could be arguing as a B minus, but that control element can be very significant. I mean, even if your opponent was hoping to shoot, you can be hiding behind that forest, right? Uh, it is just an AoE 4, but you can be touching that up against other terrain and really limiting the amount of shooting they have. So I feel that this is significant enough to be giving them a B. Now, what do we think about personal output? Now, it, it is mat 7, which we said is going to mat 10 once you hit the first time. It's P plus S14, which is nice. Uh, of course, if you do decide to put the stone skin on yourself, then that could be 16, which is a lot better. And there's also that fact that there's that sneaky component to it, right? That you can be jumping around forest to forest, um, although that can be kind of focus intensive, right? Uh, if we are not having ourselves in a spot where we just perfectly have it all laid out for us, you know, and we had to actually then cast a spell out there so that we have the rapid growth, we have the force we want it, we cast the stone skin on ourselves, that is now four fury that we've already invested and I don't feel there's enough there. So you kind of need to already have these things in place, maybe upkeeping this those two spells now you're down two fury or maybe you're in a spot where okay we're not getting sneaky we're just gonna try and say it's late game we've already put weight of stone on ourselves and now we're gonna try and finish the things ourselves i feel it's there it's not really really powerful but again i feel that this is a spot where we can be saying this is about a b right you can be hitting very hard once you hit the first time that defense goes down so you're basically mat 10 so you can really get these things done if need be again i, I almost want to lean back to a b minus but i'm okay putting this one to a b because there are those tricks and if you're able to plan ahead you can be very very dangerous now let's talk about a new player if a new player came to me and said, Malorian, I'm, I'm joining this community, I want to be playing in this Brawl Machine League, and I want to be playing Baldur, do I think that this is a, a good uh, option for them? And I'm kind of mixed on this one because, as we said, in order for you to get the most from Baldur, you do have to have some good pre-planning. There's a lot of tools on the card, but if you don't know how to use them the best way, you can be spinning your wheels a lot. You can get yourself in trouble, you know, minusing speed on things that maybe you don't want to have minus speed. So... I actually feel that this one, I would be a little bit reluctant. Um, is it an absolute no, you should not be doing this? I don't think so, but I think this is something where I'd be leaving it as a C. You know, like if they want to do it, it's not the worst thing, but it's not something where I expect them to have a really good experience. I might even suggest like mm, maybe consider some other options. Now, what about a grade for an experienced player? For an experienced player, I think this would be much better, right? If somebody came in and said, Malorian, I'm going to go into this tournament and I want to win it. I want to go and crush everybody. Well, this is now all of a sudden where you can be using those tricks to your advantage. You are using that feat in that free forest. Well, not free, you're casting it. <laughs> that castable forest to its highest effect, making sure that you're getting that alpha, hitting hard, doing lots of work, setting yourself up for those surprise assassinations or you're hopping from this forest to that forest it's not going to be like a crushing thing like i don't think this is an a but i do feel that this is going to be a b something where you're setting yourself up in a, in a pretty powerful way but not in a crushing powerful way i'm not going to go and put this up as like a b plus i think this is a solid b 
So there you have it. That's Balder. You know, overall, the, the scores are relatively average, are ranking up there in the B. Uh, we'll be going over other casters and warlocks later. But Balder, you know, if that's one that you haven't tried in Circle, I think it's worth trying. There's a lot of interesting things you can do on there. Except, like I said, if you're a newer, newer player in Circle, maybe not the, the best part to start. Maybe go and try one of the other ones. So there you go. If you disagree with me, please let me know. And as well, if there is now a Warcaster or Warlock that you want me to cover, hey, the doors are open. I'm going to be jumping over to all of them now every two weeks, coming back with another one. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Bye.